Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast, Talk Time with Jay Allen Photography. It is the very first episode of the podcast, and I just want to take this moment right now to say thank you so much for watching, listening, however you're actually getting this content. Thank you, really, I do truly appreciate it. Uh, if you follow me on YouTube, Instagram, uh, here just on the podcast, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Time is valuable, time is money. And uh, I couldn't be doing what I do without you. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. So this is the very first episode. And what I would really like to do is just take this first episode, maybe the second, to kind of introduce you to me. With YouTube, I really didn't get a chance to do that. It basically just kind of hit the ground running with videos. And I never really got to kind of got to tell people who I am, or where I'm from, what I do. And so... Uh, the podcast kind of gives me a little bit better format to do that and so that's really what the intention is with the podcast and then just of course to talk photography so uh, like I said I just want to kind of introduce myself to you for this very first episode and kind of give you a little bit of background on what makes me click haha <laughs> Uh, first of all, my name is Jason Carmony, not Jay or Jason Allen, but my middle name is actually Allen, and I really kind of like the sound of Jay Allen when I was kind of going through a rebranding back in 2018, 2019, and so I just kind of stuck with the the Jay Allen. I just thought it sounded better, and so that's kind of where the Jay Allen comes from for from the for the photography side of it. So uh, my parents don't necessarily care for that too much; they like the last name, but. I just felt like Jay Allen sounded a little bit better than Jay Carmony. Who knows? I could be wrong, but that's where uh, that came from. So uh, if you are finding me from YouTube or Instagram, thank you again for listening. The YouTube channel has just kind of been an out of nowhere thing for me. I, I really, at the beginning of 2023, my idea was to post a video every week and just see where it went and I really kind of had no clue I did have some ideas I wanted you know a thousand subscribers uh, and I wanted to monetize the channel and there's a lot more to monetizing a YouTube channel than just having a thousand subscribers but that's kind of where I was thinking and I never once in a million years thought I would be sitting at 7,000 after my first year whether that's good or bad you know I don't know but uh, for me <laughs> it blows me away and and it's just something that has been really special, and I've truly enjoyed it. I've truly get it. I, I've truly enjoyed getting to read a lot of the comments uh, that I get from the YouTube, and so um, I just really do appreciate those who take the time to watch every video every week. And you know, I know there's probably not content for everybody in there, but there's content enough for some people. And so uh, for those people who take the time to watch and comment and and subscribe and you guys are rock you guys you guys are are awesome and that's kind of where I am with the podcast this year I just was like you know what I've really kind of wanted to do this I think it's uh, an avenue that uh, some something that I just kind of really wanted to pursue and create and so here we are right before the beginning of 2024 and just like with the YouTube channel I want to try to do a podcast every week and just kind of see how it goes where it goes um, several, maybe about a month and a half ago, I was listening to a podcast and the title of the podcast was why not me? And, and it really was kind of like, you know, why not, um, take these steps. And so for me, that's kind of where I was really like on the fence with the podcast. And I just decided, you know what, why not? Why not me? Why just, why everybody else? You know, I just wanted to go ahead and try it and see what happens. And if nothing comes of it, nothing happens of it. So be it. But I just, I didn't want to go and think, man, I wish I would have done that, and I didn't. Uh, so here we go, episode one, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I think it's I think it's something really special, and it just kind of is is something that's kind of been on my heart for quite a while. Uh, how did I get into photography? You know, I have quite a few people ask, and I like to actually tell the story, and so I'll go ahead and tell that here. Years ago, way back back in 20. 2005 actually is really kind of where I, I first started into the world of photography. I had absolutely zero clue what I was doing. Uh, I didn't even have a good camera. Uh, I mean, that seems like such a long time ago, but 2005, I actually bought my very first Mustang. And so 
I had wanted a Mustang since I was like 15 years old, and so to finally get my hands on one, man, I really wanted to capture photos of it. And so I got like a little point and shoot camera. You know, we didn't have cell phones with good cameras at that point, so it was a point and shoot Canon camera, and I was using it to take pictures of the Mustang. And I was part of some Mustang groups, you know, forums were big back in those days, and so. Uh, me and some Mustang buddies, we would go out, wash the cars on the weekends, and take some pictures of the car. And, and you know, I, I kind of was okay at it, but the camera, for the most part, on those point and shoots does pretty much everything. So I really didn't have to do anything other than literally point and shoot. So, but I kind of was falling in love with it. You know, it was really fun to do. I was getting some cool photos of my car, and the best thing about it is the car didn't complain if I got some bad photos. You know, I just go out the next weekend and do it. Yes, something I haven't introduced about myself. I am married and I've got a beautiful 22-year-old uh, daughter. And she does kind of play into this a little bit. But my wife and daughter both would tell you that to this day, I have more pictures of that first Mustang than I do of both of them. And I would probably agree. Uh, but that's really, auto photography is really kind of what kind of got me going in photography. I quickly outgrew that PowerShot camera and bought a, a digital Rebel from a friend. He was selling it. It was my first detachable lens camera. And I was like, "Woo! this is awesome, man. Check this out. I've got this cool little 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And I just, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was going to do well. And again, I was taking pictures of the Mustang and I was kind of getting some decent composition on it. And I really enjoyed what I was doing. Um, some friends were asking me to take pictures of their cars. So... You know, it just kind of grew from there. My daughter, she was real young at that time. And so she would kind of jump in front and do some posing and pictures and stuff like that. Posing, not anything decent, but you know, like I, I didn't know what to do as far as posing her, but she would sit there in front of the Mustang and pose with the car. And so I would take pictures. And so she was kind of jumping into that, you know, slowly but surely I was kind of learning that camera and, and learning photography, but um, and I say slowly and I mean slowly. It took me a long time to learn the camera. That was in 2005 and jump ahead to 2010 and I was deployed to Afghanistan, deployed with a photojournalist and so I was kind of showing him some of my Mustang photos and trying to maybe pick his brain about photography and you know maybe see what I can do to become a better photographer and so he kind of gave me a little bit of a rundown of what I should be looking at as far as a camera and and what things did on the camera because again I still didn't have a clue I really didn't know what the shutter was I didn't or, or how it affected anything I didn't you know let me rephrase that so I'm a videographer in the Air Force and I know about shutter I know about aperture I know about ISO but I knew it from a video standpoint not from a photography standpoint so I would talk to my photojournalist friend and ask him and so he was kind of guiding me a little bit along the way but not in a way that I I really needed or not in a way that I fully understood probably is a better way to to say that so you know he's telling me some stuff so I like I like I said I'm deployed and I convinced my wife hey I really need a, a new camera so that um, maybe I can make this photography thing work. I didn't have a clue why I wanted to be a photographer, but I enjoyed doing it. And so, you know, I really, I don't know what I did to tell her or to convince her other than maybe she was just super supportive, but I convinced her that I could get a new camera or, you know, that I could get a camera. And I don't even remember what it was. And again, it was another Canon camera and a lens that my friend suggested was the Nifty 50 or the 50 millimeter 1.8. You know, at that time, it was like 120, 115, something like that dollars. And he said, that's really going to help your portraits because, you know, you can kind of blur that background. Well, again, I didn't know what 1.8 meant. I didn't I didn't really have a clue what any of that meant, but I just knew he knows what he's talking about. I'll get the camera, I'll get the 50 millimeter, millimeter lens and I'm going to be able to get some good portraits. He kind of gave me a quick rundown to let me know exactly how to use my new camera. <laughs> and this is this is basically it. This is how I really thought that I was a photographer. So the first thing I knew was he said if I want to stop like more natural motion, you know, like somebody talking and moving as they're talking, right? And I'm, and I'm taking a picture of it. 
If I shoot it at 1 60th of a second, more than likely I'm going to get a little camera blur. But if I shoot it at 1 250th of a second, more than likely that's going to stop that action. Boom. So that's my shutter. Two, keep my ISO as low as possible so that I don't introduce any extra grain or noise. That's my second thing that I knew. Three, using that 50 millimeter 1.8 at 1.8 is really going to help me blur the background and separate my subject from the background. And that was it. That's what I knew. That's like a minute detail of the exposure triangle, but I still had no clue, never even heard of the term exposure triangle, never knew what it was, never knew what any one of those things had to do with the other and how they actually worked. But that's what I knew. And for whatever reason, I thought I was a photographer. So I get back from my deployment. I've got my new camera. I've got my new lens. And I am a photographer, right? You know, as a lot of people do when they get their detachable lens cameras, they think, oh, man, I can do this. I'm going to go take family pictures. I'm going to do wedding. I'm going to do portraits, whatever. And that's not the case. And it definitely wasn't the case for me. Um, again, coming from a video background, I knew composition and I knew lighting or how scenes should look, but not really how to light anything using like flash or anything like that. That was still way beyond me. I'm still kind of a baby photographer at this point. Uh, using manual mode on my camera, that wasn't a thing. I didn't really understand that. I did know about aperture priority and shutter priority to where if I could put one, put the camera in an aperture priority, you know, it's going to let me keep my aperture where I need it and it will adjust everything else on the camera. The same with shutter priority and auto, of course. I tried not to use auto, but I, I still didn't really know what I was doing. So using those priority modes really helped. The problem was is I didn't understand them. And so I would put the camera into shutter or aperture priority and I would see the numbers on the camera doing whatever they're doing, but I didn't understand what they were doing. And so that is one thing, and you're probably going to hear me say that over and over in this first episode, is it took me way too long to figure that out. So that is the exposure triangle. And today I understand it. Today I understand what one has to do with the other and what they have to do you know, with the other one. So you've got aperture shutter speed and iso and if you adjust one you need to know what it's going to require to adjust on the others in order to get the images that you want i'm a dance photographer so i'm typically shooting my dance at one one thousandth of a second on the shutter speed and so i also know that i need to shoot it at 1.2 because i want that separation so what does that do with the ISO and how do I compensate with the ISO in order to give my camera enough light to come in to give me proper exposure on my subject and my scene. And so that's kind of like a basic model of the exposure triangle. But I didn't understand that in 2010 and I didn't understand it in 2012. Uh, you know, it took me too long. It took me about seven years as I look back and kind of think about things. But it took me way too long to figure that out. It's, you know, it's hard for new photographers. Again, you get these cameras and some of them are smart enough, especially with these mirrorless cameras today. You can do a lot and not necessarily understand what you're doing and still get some decent images. And, and you know, that necessarily wasn't the case for me. I struggled and I think probably a lot of new photographers struggle with this. And I would love to know from people how long was your struggle? Did, did you struggle a long time? Was it short? You know, when did things start to click for you? So please feel free to leave that in comments. I would very much like to hear that. And I do apologize. I've got two dogs in this room with me and they are snoring. So you might hear them in the background. I do apologize for that. But that's kind of where this podcast is coming from, right? So I just decided I want to do this. So I'm sitting in my, my office space in my house I'm not really set up for a podcast, but I'm doing it. And of course, my two dogs wanted to join in, but they fell asleep real fast. So hopefully you're not sleeping and snoring while you're listening to this. So let's go back 2010. I'm, st I'm learning, but I'm really slowly learning because I don't fully understand what, what's happening with the camera. I knew about golden hour, you know, morning after, or, you know, sunrise, sunset. But I didn't fully understand exactly still how to go out and get good photos. 
So I would go out and get like, probably do like a two hour session, which was way too long and come away with like maybe 3% of those photos that were even shareable or usable or printable, uh, if that high. Uh, probably 90% were just garbage and you know whatever's left over what is that 7% was probably okay but they weren't anything spectacular and it, there was nothing that was spectacular in the beginning but just a couple that weren't duds you know so it was really frustrating for me to go out and spend that amount of time and come back and feel like I wasted my time but now I wasted their time and it, it was honestly a struggle. You know, my my wife would um, give me some constructive criticism and I would not take it. I still struggle taking constructive criticism, but I definitely didn't take it then. My, my excuse was, well, you're really not creative. You're not a photographer. You really don't know. For whatever reason, I know what good composition is as far as a videographer goes. But when it came to still photos, I was shooting everything at a slant. You know, what is that? A Dutch angle. And so... I look back at my new work or at my old work and there is n practically none of it could I even crop correctly because of that angle was so hard it would cut cop people's heads off so absolutely horrible composition even though I knew what I was doing with composition I still was doing it wrong but you know I was trying to do my own thing you know that's how that's how I would take it and so you know I see a lot of photographers nowadays you know they post out on social media and they ask for CC and then they get that CC back and some people are rude, but sometimes it's very legit constructive criticism and the the poster still won't accept it. You know, there'll be excuses for this or that. And man, if you're asking for critique, you got to learn how to take it. And, and, and I think it will make you better if you're able to take it. But, you know, it's hard for new photographers. Uh, you know, I didn't, I was deployed with a photojournalist, but I, I didn't have like, friends that were photographers i did have some co-workers that were photographers but you know they're doing their own thing too so sometimes i'd go to work and i would ask them about things and they would kind of help me out at work trying to figure things out the problem was is as soon as they left and i would go back and kind of do it on my own i didn't know what they were doing to make the photos look so good so i'm like i, I don't get it you know again it was the whole exposure thing it was just throwing me off and, and it would really frustrate me knowing that I was actually doing it, but then, you know, an hour later I couldn't I couldn't repeat it and I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. And I couldn't remember what they said, so I'm definitely not gonna ask them again, hey, what did you tell me again? So, you know, some of that stuff was is definitely me, you know. I, I my frustrations were getting the better of me, but it was also my laziness. Uh, was getting the better of me probably my pride I felt like I should know it and I felt like I should be able to do it I wasn't going to ask for help I didn't know where to even look I didn't necessarily think I needed to look but I definitely needed to look I definitely needed help and I struggled uh, 2010 to 2012 and so those were kind of these first two dates really those were the two years of my growing phase and and those two years, I say I grew, but I did not really grow at all. I think the most important thing that I learned out of those two years was that I knew absolutely nothing about photography. And I really did truly struggle. And I really did truly get frustrated. And it just, it wasn't a good learning experience. I, I look back now and I see you know, missteps. I see the things that I made mistakes on. I see the things that I should have done differently. Uh, you know, I did get some paid gigs and probably over that two year time frame, I maybe got 15 to 20 paid things. And I really wish that I would have never taken those people's money. I, I feel like I kind of stole their money, stole their time. And I, I, I know that they probably don't think about that at all. But, you know, often new photographers, we, we kind of try to charge right away or we charge very little. And a lot of times those photos are not that good. And, and I just don't think my, my work was that good. It just wasn't the best. And so I feel kind of like a thief when it comes to that, my early years as a photographer. But, you know, they were growing years. 
Um, but they were very frustrating years for me. And, you know, I, those first two years, you know, initially I would shoot, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't practice enough. And I really didn't practice at all. The only times I really picked up the camera is when somebody wanted me to take their pictures. The problem was, is there weren't a lot of people wanting me to take their pictures because my work wasn't good enough. It wasn't getting good enough because, as you know, I wasn't shooting enough. And so fast forward to now, I shoot as often as I can shoot. Probably not as often as I shot back in 2020, 2019, when I was really grinding. But uh, I still try to shoot multiple times a week if for no, no other reason than just to keep with the feel of photography back then that wasn't the case you know i wouldn't pick up the camera for months and so then i would get somebody that would want me to take pictures or something like that and so i'd pick up the camera and start rooting around and fumbling all over the camera trying to learn the camera again and you can't do that <laughs> you know on a photo session and so you know it was just one of the hardest things for me to understand. I didn't go to YouTube. YouTube was kind of new at that time. There were probably still people out there learning or teaching photography, but I wasn't out there looking for it. And that's probably the biggest thing, the biggest difference from 2010 to 2012 Jason to this new version of me, where now if I want to figure something out, I'm going to go out and look for it right then. Then my ego, my laziness, um, my entitlement. I, I didn't want to look for any of that. So, uh, you know, 2010 goes, 2012, you know, I'm getting ready to move. And I was in the military and they were stationing me up in the Baltimore area near Maryland. And that's basically where uh, the Department of Defense teaches all new photographers, you know, the, the basics and the fundamentals. And those were the things that I had no clue of. And so here I am in 2012, late 2012, thinking, what do I want to do? I'm not growing. I'm not getting any better. I'm super frustrated. Uh, this just isn't working. And I'm getting ready to go shoot with people who, or, or compete against, I guess, people who know what they're doing. And so I just, you know, I just was kind of like, you know what, let's call it a day. This thing isn't working for me. Uh, the only thing I can actually really take decent pictures of is my car. And so I had my nice little camera, nice little camera bag, my nifty 50, and I pretty much put them all away, put them in a closet, packed them up and moved to Maryland. And I basically quit photography. Uh, the only thing I would really ever pull it out for was to take pictures of my daughter, take pictures of my wife, or our family they weren't the greatest but those were about the only times I picked it up so my photography career basically began and ended in a two-year span with me learning really next to nothing about photography the basic fundamentals and I quit and so that's the end of episode one please come back for episode two where I kind of basically will bring you up to speed and up to date with who I am as a photographer today. The podcast isn't always going to be about me, but it's definitely going to be about photography. I am a portrait photographer first. I love portrait photography, so I'm going to talk that type of work. Uh, I am not an event photographer, so if you're looking for advice on weddings or event photography or stuff like that, unfortunately, that's not me. Maybe this might not necessarily be the podcast for you. I'm sure that you can still learn some stuff, but I don't have a lot of knowledge and experiences in those areas. I'm not really a landscape or nature photographer. You know, I've done a couple, I've done some shots like that, but that's not really where this is going. This is going more towards portraiture. Uh, I'm not a super technical guy. I've mentioned that in my, my YouTube channel quite often. But when there's new tech coming out, I'm a Canon shooter. And when there's new camera gear coming out, I will definitely talk about that. I know for sure that the Canon R5 Mark II is on the horizon. And I'm really interested in the specs on that. So when they announce that, we'll probably talk about that. When it comes out, I'll probably buy it and I will give you my ideas on it. Uh, there's uh, some lenses that are probably going to be dropping this year. I'm not going to get every one of them, but I would love to maybe test them out, use them and give you my ideas on these lenses. Uh, it's not going to be all tech, 
But, you know, I, I do want to keep people interested, so that's kind of where I'm going to go with that. I'm also thinking of bringing in some guest photographers, maybe some, like, mentor uh, figures for me. There's a couple that I've got. I feel like a lot of the photographers, or at least the comments that I get on YouTube, are from newer or intermediate level photographers, and so I kind of want to maybe work towards that end a little bit on some of my uh, podcasts. I think I actually would like to interview a couple of the models that I work with and try to get their perspective of things, kind of what they think when they're going to a shoot, you know, what, what's going through their head. So I just kind of want to try a little bit of different things. Uh, you know, really when I was thinking about the podcast, I, I've been looking for some photography podcasts tonight. For whatever reason, I just don't find things that keep my attention. And so that's one reason also that I decided to go ahead and do this podcast so hopefully it can keep your attention. I do hope you like it. I like. I hope that you can find something that interests you in some of these podcasts. And please, like I said, stick around for episode two, where I go ahead and finish up this introduction. And then we're going to jump into the new year and uh, start doing other podcast things. But thank you again so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, keep shooting.